Hey guys, it's Missy Wolf, and I'm here with Ryan Robinette. <laughs> you want to say hi? <laughs> hey, Missy. <laughs> I am so excited to talk to you because when I heard your um your that you wrote your new single, "Let Me Start." First of all, it's a great song. I I love it. I can completely hear this being played on the radio every day and you know just singing along to it is is pretty phenomenal i love the words and i love i just love the story of the song for me it's it's hopeful for every female out there every female wants a guy to to feel that way about her and you know that song is just it's such a good song and then i found out that you co-wrote it with my friend george dukas so oh yeah you know george I do. In fact, I told him that I was going to be talking to you tonight, and he told me to tell you hello. So, great, great, great. Uh, very, very, very talented and uh, even better person. Oh yeah, he he's he's amazing. So I wanted to ask, well, what was it like for you? Because I know on your coming of age EP, you you were just you were a solo writer. You you know you just you did it all on your own. So for this, what was it like writing with someone else and somebody you know like George, who's established and who's done really well in the music world? Oh man, uh, super nerve wracking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I wrote uh, I wrote by myself forever, um, and then. Just just recently, probably within the last year, year and a half, I started co-writing, and George was actually only my second like co-write ever. <laughs> it was crazy to say um, to your second co-write be with uh, someone, just a veteran writer, a veteran artist, uh, mm -hmm. with so much under his belt. Uh, it was just really cool, nerve-wracking, but uh, he he was great. Uh, he he kind of walking through it, calming down a little bit, and uh, it was fun. Right, right. Yeah, and, you know, when, see, for, for, for me, you know, when I, I first, you know, started talking to artists, and I was, I was so nervous, and so I know that feeling, but the very first time I spoke to George, same thing, it was like, wow, he was very calming, and yeah. just, he talks to everybody. He's so nice to all of his fans. And um, so it's, it, I'm, I like hearing that, that, you know, he was able to talk you through it and because it is, it's one of those things where you're just, you know, when you're stepping out there and, you know, you're, you're talking to somebody who's had so much experience, it, it can be kind of intimidating, if you will. Like for me, that's what I've run into. So, so to hear that from you, a new artist starting out, like, that's just, it's great that you had such a good experience with him. And I, I love hearing stories like that. Did you, did you think when you started pursuing your career that you were going to have moments like this where, you know, or did it just not hit you until you were there? Like, wow, this is really happening. Uh, I, don't, I still don't know if it has hit me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, all, it's all moved so fast. Uh, since I, since I put my EP out and into the single, um, I've co-written uh, multiple times with a lot of people now. And uh, it's I think it's, it happens so fast and you stay so busy. I don't know if you – sometimes you don't take the time to say, wow, this is happening. Right. You, you just kind of get caught up in it. Right, right. And I, so it, was there anybody in, in your life, in your childhood that – you know, influenced you to pursue music? I mean, you grew up in southeastern Ohio, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, my dad um, actually is a singer-songwriter, um, guitarist, a solo act. He's, he's been in bands, uh, and he, he really introduced me to music at a very young age. So okay. Everything, mostly classic rock. I mean, that's what I grew up on. Mm -hmm. uh, Jenner, the Eagles, all that stuff. And then... He was in several uh, country bands in the 90s, um, doing like Restless Heart, Garth, like all that. So that oh, wow. Yeah, that kind of is what molded me um, at a very young age. Oh, that's great. And, you know, not not every artist has that. So, you know, I think for you that was that was probably, you know, a really, really, really good thing, having having his – you know, background along with you for support that, that had to, that had to just help, you know, um, your mindset a little bit too. And, you know, you knew what you were getting involved with, right? I mean, the music industry is not the easiest industry to get into. Yeah. Yeah. You told me not to do it several times. <laughs> 
I wonder who was going to ask that next. I was like, was he supportive or was he trying to talk you out of it? Um, I. Yeah, he just always uh, always told me have a backup plan, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. It doesn't always work out the way you want it to. So. Right, and I mean, and that's really good advice because it's not like he's trying to crush your dream or anything, but being realistic, I mean, how many people have worked really hard and they've tried and they've tried and they've tried and they just haven't been able to, to get it to where they need it to be? And not for lack of talent, it's just – the doors weren't opening. So, you know, very smart advice from him. And I mean, you know, and I, I've seen it a lot with other artists too, who they, they, they become fully educated and get degrees and they have, you know, their, their fallback plan. So, I mean, I, I think your dad's a very smart man for that. Um, but I'm really glad, you know, that the music is working out for you. I mean, touring with Dustin Lynch, that's, that, that had to be huge for you, right? Uh, I, I'm actually not touring with Dustin. Um, my my good buddy Tyler Rich is touring with Dustin. Oh, okay. See, I misread that. I am so sorry. Wow. Well, okay. Wait, your good buddy who? <laughs> Tyler Rich. Um, right. I co-wrote a song on his EP, um, and when he when he moved to Nashville, he took that song and recorded it and. Uh, Landed that spot, opened it up for Dustin Lynch on the Hell of a Night tour. So uh, he's been playing. He's been playing that song we wrote together uh, on the whole tour. It'll end up being forty plus cities. So we playing that song. So. Wow. Yeah. That's got to be pretty incredible. Now, are you are you able to you know catch him at any of the shows? Is there you know are they going to be playing near you that you get to go and you know hang out with him? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was actually just that. Uh, um, the show at the House of Blues here in Orlando um, oh, last Thursday. So, yeah, it was a blast. He got me uh, backstage. We hung out, talked to Dustin, talked to Chris Lane. Uh, just just a great time. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and, uh, it, I mean, it's another another side of music that I'm chasing is the writing world. Um, mm-hmm. it, it helps open so many doors for the artists world as well. Absolutely. I mean, you know, we we talk about this all the time at Center Stage. You know, we give credit to songwriters. Um, You know, that's one of my biggest things is I I love talking to the songwriters and getting into their minds and figuring out, you know, how they get to where they are. And, you know, um, unfortunately, so many so many fans of just music who don't really involve themselves in in the industry and the knowledge behind it. um, They just they just hear Blake Shelton or they hear, you know, any other artist and they think, Oh, okay, that's their song. But a lot of artists don't really write a lot of songs for themselves. And which is, is, you know, Hey, it is what it is. But I think songwriters need to get a little bit more credit for, for the work that they do. Um, you know, and I think Nashville's going that way, at least from what I've seen. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of, a lot of the artists now, um, a lot quicker uh, to give credit to the writers and stuff. I mean, um, a good example is Chris Young. And, uh, yes. And um, I'm coming over. And mm-hmm. He throws up right away that Crowder and uh, Josh Hogue helped him write that. Right. Uh, he always puts that on social media, and I think that stuff's really, really cool. Yeah, Chris Young is happens to be one of my all-time favorites. Um, country artists and um, just the person that he is behind the music like there's there's things that I've seen and things that I've heard from from his friends that are just they're pretty they're pretty amazing and you know I mean here's this guy who's just a normal guy you know and so many artists are just normal guys you know but but you know, when you're in the top 40, like, it's it's just like flipping a switch. Something changes, right? But not with Chris. He's just still that same, you know, I'll talk to any fan person that he, he, he's been. And I think that's pretty incredible. And um, I love that he gives credit to his songwriters, especially that song. It's huge. That song is it. But, but anyways, back to you. Back to you. <laughs> so you, you, oh, go ahead. I get excited about that song too, and just Chris Young in general. He's he's so talented. I know. I love that song. I bought that CD for myself for Christmas, and I wrapped it up as a gift from my kids. <laughs> I'm like so bad. I love that. I love that whole CD. I just love it all. Um, but so you've played along with, alongside many many bigger name acts like Parmalee and Janet Kramer. So and Low Cash. 
what has it been like for you, your musical experience and being able to, you know, play alongside of these, these performers? Um, again, I, I just think uh, sometimes it just doesn't hit you. Uh, like you're there and you're in the moment and stuff. And then mm-hmm. I, I try to take, take a step back every now and then and be like, man, that's cool. But right. I got to hang out with guys from low cash and talk about some more talented, humble guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, I played with them down on, at the Island Hopper Songwriters Fest in Sandville Island, Kansas, Florida. And, uh, man, they're just cool. All of them. Um, and, yeah, Pong Lee was at that. Jenny Crane was at that. Ruthie Collins. Um, George was down there. Um, just yeah. tons of good writers and artists out in Nashville. Oh, yeah, that's that's awesome. Now, so are you in Florida then? Yeah, yeah. I'm stationed uh, in Orlando. Uh, I play, okay. play around Central Florida regularly um and then i go back and forth in nash probably every four to six weeks uh for writing and stuff um, okay. I lot, yeah i have a lot more rights set up um in january uh some with some some ETV writers and uh some getting in the circles up there uh right just through social media. yeah it's been crazy oh that's great yeah because i was gonna ask i'm like you know i keep hearing you talk about florida but then you've been talking about Nashville. i'm like all right I got to know. So do you have plans then, you know, in the future to maybe move out to, to Nashville? I mean, a lot of artists seem to be, you know, going out that direction. I've talked to so many artists who, you know, started in California or in, you know, uh, you know, um, Georgia and, and Alabama, but they always seem to just be going back out to Nashville. So is that something that, you know, you have planned in the future? Yeah, absolutely. Um I'm I'm hoping about mid next year. Uh, I have a lot of uh, previous commitments down here for shows and stuff right. to early, early next year. Um, that will just make it too hectic going back and forth. Um, so I'll, I'll stay sure. here, travel up there for some rights, um, and then hopefully by mid next year I'll be making the move up there. Oh, definitely. Well, I mean, it sounds like you've already met some, you know, really wonderful people and, you know, um, I mean, getting to hang out backstage with your friend and, you know, talking to people, you know, uh, like Low Cash and, and Dustin Lynch. Have you found that you're making more um, connections to be able to pursue what you want a little bit easier? Or have they given you like any advice, as, you know, to, to what to do next to kind of help build your career? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh it it's definitely helped light a fire. Um mm-hmm. but to know that it is within reach, um, as hard as it may seem sometimes that you, you never know when it's coming. Um right. I know yeah, I mean social media has just been huge and it, I continue to gain a lot of momentum through social media. Um and it's it's kind of like the equalizer for for people who can't knock down the doors of labels and uh these pub companies. Um, you can get the music out there to as many people and people can share uh, right. even if you're not there. Um, so it's been, social media has been great and continues to be great. Oh, absolutely. We talk about that a lot, too. I mean, you know, the especially the, the younger generation, you know, they're not they're not watching MTV and VH1 and all of those music video channels anymore. No, they're watching YouTube and they're on social media and they're, you know, following all these people that, you know, have started from basically their living room and and didn't have a huge fan base and they're just growing and growing and you know um social media has done a lot for a lot of people and there is so much more talent out there than what you just hear on the radio every day so um i'm i'm definitely glad that we're able to talk to you tonight because you know you have you have an amazing voice um and i say this you know to artists that i really really enjoy and i was watching your cover of die a happy man earlier and you know Thomas Rhett is is another really big name you know and hey he's done really 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 well but what I liked about your cover on this song was it sounded like you know the song but there was still Ryan was in that song it wasn't just I'm going to sing it exactly the way that you know um that he does I'm going to I'm going to sing it with my own touch to it and I just really I really appreciated that because I could sing along but so it wasn't so different but there was just it was you you made it yours and I liked that so I don't know what was that like for you covering his song yeah no um I do I do that I guess everyone 
at one point, I know I sang songs exactly like people did. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I guess it just, you kind of find your voice and you find, like, how maybe you can make little melody changes here and there. Mm-hmm. They don't change, they don't change uh, the feel of the song, um, but kind of make it fit you. Um, right. Because if people, people want to listen to the song, then they'll turn on Thomas Jett's version, you know. Uh, right. So you want to give them something a little different than what they would hear if they just played the song or why they listen to you. Um, right. That's how it kind of, Look at it. So. Well, I I was really excited to to see that because I never know what I'm going to get with a cover. You know, am I going to get exactly the same thing, or is it going to be different enough that I'm going to be like, all right, you know, this this guy wants to be himself, and and you did that, and I was very I was very excited about that. Um, you know, like I said, you just you just don't always get it, and sometimes people take a song that you're like ready to listen to and it's like, Whoa, it's so different. What is that? What am I listening to? <laughs> so, um, so I, I loved it. So thank you for that. And, um, you have, you have quite a few videos posted for fans to see. So that's pretty cool. And I plan on including them in the article, if you don't mind, because I really want people to see who you are and, um, you know, get a feel for, for what you have to offer, because I think you're going to go pretty far. Um, especially, especially your, your songwriting, you have really great songwriting skills and, um, you know, country music is about stories and, you know, you're, you're really good at that. So thank you. Thank Thank you for that. No, thank you. Uh, You keep telling everyone that. (laughs) Oh no, we will. We will definitely. And I mean, is there so so I know that that's your your newest release, right? The Let Me Start. Um do you have anything else coming up in the, I mean, we have a new year coming up. So do you have anything exciting you want to share with us? Yes. Um I'm, man, I probably I probably have about 15 20 new songs um that I've written in just the past couple months that oh, Wow. Yeah, I'm just, I'm more, like I said, I'm co-writing a lot. I'm going to be co-writing some more. i uh, probably with Tyler Rich and, uh, like I said, a couple of Sunday ATV writers. Mm-hmm. Um, some really, really talented guys like Murphy Elmore um, in the new year. And I'm just trying to find the songs right now. Uh, I want to keep writing and hopefully be able to have a three, four song EP out um, by spring, beginning of summer probably. Nice. Well, as soon as you have it ready to go and you have your plans, I mean, definitely let us know. Um, you know, I tell everybody that when we, when we talk, whenever you guys have something new, just let us know so that Center Stage can be a part of it and we can help promote you and, you know, get, get the news out to all the fans, you know, because um, there's so much talent out there. You are part of that and we want to, we want to keep moving forward with you. So keep us, keep us in the loop for sure. And, you know, we will make sure that we have all of your links so that all the fans can follow you. It'll be, you know, right in the article, all of your, all of your social media will be right there so that everybody can follow you and, um, you know, connect with you on, on Twitter and in all of those places. I mean, you're such a, easy guy to talk to also. So thank you for that. Um, I wish all interviews were super easy, <laughs> but you, you made it great. And uh, man, just thank you for taking the time and we can't wait to hear more from you. And um, yeah, I'm just, I'm excited. I love your, I love your new song. I, I absolutely love it. I, I can't wait to, to see where you go. I know it's going to be, it's going to be amazing. You have a huge career in front of you. Thank you, Messi. I can't thank you guys enough. We truly, truly, truly appreciate it. No problem. Well, you have a great night, and if there's anything we can do for you, you just let us know, okay? Sounds good. I will keep you guys in the loop. All right. I'm going to hold you to that. (laughs) I'm going to hold you guys to it. Absolutely. You got it. Well, have yourself a great night, and we will talk to you soon. All right. Sounds good. (laughs) All right. Bye.